Yes! Tyler Berger, looking for 16.6 to take the lead. 16 pounds and 13 ounces, a new leader. There's a lot of different soft plastics out there on the market, but probably my favorite soft plastic of all time is a tube. I love a tube for a number of different reasons, but today I wanna to tell you of three big mistakes that a lot of guys make with the tube, so stay tuned, it's gonna be a good one. There's actually quite a few different tubes out there on the market, but one of my favorite tubes and one that I'm gonna be talking about today is the Strike King Flippin' Tube. Sure, they have some awesome colors, but the thing that I really like about this tube is that the top about half inch of this tube is actually solid plastic. It's not hollow like most tubes are. The great thing about this, especially if I'm Texas rigging a tube, is that I'm not going to go through as many baits and right now, this tube is actually on sale at Sportsman's Outfitters. Com. Right now they're running their big cabin fever sale. So if you're trying to stock up on some of your favorite lures going into next year, check out the link down below in the description and you can pick up some of my favorite tubes. At this point in time, the tube is actually considered an old school bait. This is a soft plastic that it seems like a lot of guys used to use back in the day. It really became extremely popular after Denny Brower won a Bassmaster Classic actually flipping a tube under docks on High Rock Lake. But since then, there's been a million different other soft plastics that have come out, and it seems like the tube has just gone on the back burner. Now, although there are a ton of different soft plastics out there, today I wanna to tell you why the tube is unique and why you should start fishing it more. Now, the first mistake that a lot of guys make with a tube is actually not knowing that a tube is the best soft plastic to stay in the same area for the longest period of time. That actually is a mouthful, but let me explain. Pretty much any soft plastic lure out there, if you cast it out on a Texas rig and start hopping it on the bottom, it's slowly going to come closer and closer and closer to you, right? We all kind of know that. But something that is actually really unique about a tube is that it will stay in almost the exact same place if you work it the right way. Now, this is actually something that I found out while bed fishing for bass down in Florida. The biggest thing here is if you rig up a tube Texas rig and you put a small weight on it, something around a 1 8 ounce to a quarter ounce, if you actually do really small pops with that bait, the tube will actually kind of pop up almost in place and kind of twirl back to almost where it was originally. When you're fishing on a bed, this really allows you to keep that bait in front of the fish for a longer period of time. And although I found out about this while bed fishing, it really applies to just my typical fishing. Like if I'm fishing a soft plastic tube around laydowns, or if I'm fishing it around vegetation, or if I'm pitching and flipping it under a dock, there are a lot of days out there when you're fishing on the water where the bass are in kind of a lethargic mood. They're not wanting to move a whole lot. So anytime I feel like it is one of those days, I always pick up the tube for the exact reason that you can really keep it in place longer than you can other soft plastics. And sometimes keeping that bait in place and in front of a fish is going to finally get that bass to eat that bait. Now, days when I go out there fishing where I think that the bass aren't moving a whole lot, number one is after a cold front. Anytime you have a cold front come through an area, a lot of times bass are going to get really close to targets like stumps or brush piles or boat docks. And a lot of times their strike window really shrinks down after a cold front. And so keeping a bait in place like the tube 
is I'm telling you, it can get you twice as many bites at times when those fish don't wanna move. Another time where I really like to keep that tube in place is if I'm fishing around heavily pressured bodies of water. Now in Ohio, I do this on a daily basis, but there's probably a lake or even a pond near you that just gets hammered by a lot of different fishermen. When you fish around a lot of pressured bodies of water, you go up to a nice lay down or something like that, and you flip your jig in there or a different soft plastic, and then you keep on going. A lot of times there's a bass that is in there, but he has seen jigs, he has seen other soft plastics, but by you showing him a tube and keeping that tube in there and really soaking it, that's what's going to help you to catch more fish in pressured bodies of water. So the next time you're out there fishing and you're fishing after a cold front or fishing a highly pressured body of water, pick up a tube, use an eighth ounce to a quarter ounce weight, and I'm telling you, you're going to get more bites. The next mistake that a lot of guys make with a tube is not fishing a tube in extremely heavy cover. There are a lot of different times throughout the year that bass are going to get in some of the heaviest cover that you can find. This might be matted vegetation. This might be really thick grass or cattails or lily pads. It could be a really thick wooden lay down or a really gnarly stump. The thing about it is a tube can come through that cover better than just about any soft plastic. A lot of times in those situations, I think the number one soft plastic that a lot of guys pick up is a beaver style bait. And I'm not saying that a beaver isn't going to work in that situation, but one thing that I have found out is that when you're fishing heavy cover, if you can use a lighter weight, you tend to get more bites. Yes, sometimes you do wanna use a really heavy weight. You wanna punch through this stuff and cause a reaction strike, but even in those matted vegetation situations, a lot of times the lighter the weight that you can fish, the more bites that you are going to get. And the thing is, if you use a tube in that situation, a lot of times you can use a lighter weight because it simply goes through the cover easier. Now, what I'm not saying is that you're gonna be able to use substantially less weight. You're not gonna be able to use a quarter ounce on a tube when you have to use a one ounce on a beaver style bait to get through that mat. But sometimes the difference between using an ounce and a half weight on a beaver and maybe just a one ounce weight on your tube can really be substantial at getting more bites. Or maybe you're fishing some cattails or reeds or thick kissimmee grass. A lot of times in those situations, you might use a half ounce weight on a beaver style bait, but with a tube, you might be able to fish a three eighths ounce. And that simple weight difference is gonna allow that bait to go in a lot nicer in the water. It's gonna go through a lot more naturally and that can get you more bites by fishing a tube instead of a different soft plastic. So when it comes to fishing really heavy cover, whatever it may be, do not sleep on the tube. Now, the last mistake that a lot of guys make with a tube is not swimming a tube. I actually talked about this similar thing when I talked about crawls, but I think a lot of guys, they automatically just pick up a swim jig anytime they want that swimming presentation. And although that is great and you can catch fish on a swim jig, there are times when using soft plastics, for instance, like a tube, can actually get you more bites by swimming a tube instead of a bait like a swim jig. Now, like the crawl video, I actually first kind of stumbled on swimming a tube kind of by accident. I remember fishing this single log that was pointed straight at my boat and I'd been flipping and pitching the tube and I actually flipped my bait right up next to this log and I didn't really like where I placed it in the water. So I just immediately started reeling as soon as that tube pretty much hit the water and a bass came out and absolutely clobbered this thing. It was like a three pounder, which was a really big bass here in Ohio, especially at the time. After that happened, I actually went on to swim a tube a lot next to lay downs that were very long like that and I started catching a lot of fish and the thing is is that this is a very very subtle presentation. You really don't have any kind of kicking action at all like you do with a swim jig or with a crawl. So I don't think swimming a tube is gonna work the best in muddy or heavily stained water, but if you have some clarity and you know the fish are shallow, I would highly suggest swimming a tube because I'm telling you it's going to get bit. And the crazy thing about swimming a tube after this incident happened where I kind of got onto the swimming the tube thing, it was a couple of years later, I actually read an article 
article in Bassmaster where Bill Lowen, which is another guy who fishes around highly pressured bodies of water, this was an exact technique that he also did. He would actually purposefully pitch a tube up into a log, let it settle on the bottom, and then simply start reeling that bait right away and caught a lot of fish doing that. It was the exact same thing that I accidentally stumbled upon, and this is something that he'd been using in that Southern Ohio, Northern Kentucky region for a long time. I will literally never forget reading that article and everything just clicked for me as to why I was catching fish swimming a tube. If you guys wanna pick up some of these tubes, don't forget to click that Sportsman's Outfitters link. And I also made another video discussing tubes. I'm gonna link that right here. So if you guys enjoyed this video, you'll probably enjoy this one as well. Please comment below, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next video.